हेलो माय डियर स्टूडियस एंड स्टूडियस स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ सर्जरी माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर महेश चौधरी आई एम वार वेलकमिंग यू इन माय सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज जिस सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज कंटेंट्स एंटायर सर्जरी विथ एनेसेशिया विथ रेडियोलॉजी विथ ऑर्थोपेडिक सो स्टेट यून विथ अस लेट स्टार्ट आवर सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज वेलकम डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन माई सर्जरी लेक्चर नंबर एटी फोर दैट इज द अल्सर साइनस एंड फिचुला इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल कवर द अल्सर टाइप्स ऑफ द अल्सर्स क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द अल्सर्स डायबिटिक अल्सर डायबिटिक फूड साइनस एंड फिचुला डिफरेंसेस एंड कंपेरिजन ऑफ साइनस एंड फिचुला कंजेंटल साइनस लाइक अम्बिलिकल साइनस यूरेकल साइनस प्री ऑरिकुलर साइनसेस ऑल दीज पॉइंट आर कवर्ड इन दिस लेक्चर नाउ फर्स्ट वी स्टार्ट विथ द अल्सर एंड अल्सर इज अ ब्रेक इन द कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ द कवरिंग इपिथिलियम किन और म्यूकोस मेमरेन इट मे आइदर फॉलो मॉलिकुलर डेथ ऑफ द सर्फेस इपिथिलियम और इट्स ट्रॉमेटिक रिमोल नाउ द एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ द एन अल्सर इज एन अल्सर हैज अ मार्जिन और एज which takes characteristic shape in the particular form of ulcer it has a floor which means an exposed surface of the ulcer and it has a base on which the ulcer rest base is better felt than seen h this is an important finding of an ulcer which by itself not only gives a clue to the diagnosis of the ulcer but also to the condition of the ulcer in the spreading ulcers the age is inflamed and edematous whereas in a healing ulcer the age if traced from the red granulation tissues in the center to the periphery will show a blue zone due to thin growing epithelium and a white zone due to the fibrosis of the scar dear students here is the image on your screen typically showing the ulcers this is another image of the ulcers of the foot there are five common types of ulcer age seen in the surgical practice are first is the undermined age is mostly seen in the tuberculosis the disease causing the ulcer spread in the, and destroys the subcutaneous tissues second is the punch out age is mostly seen in the gametous ulcer or in deep tropic ulcer the age drops down at right angle to the skin surface and the third is the sloping age is seen mostly in healing traumatic or venous ulcers every healing ulcer has a sloping edge which is reddish pur purple in color and fourth is the raised and pearly white bedded edge is a feature of rodent ulcer and a fifth is the rolled out everted edge is a characteristic features of the squamous cell carcinoma or an ulcerated adenocarcinoma this ulcer is caused by fast growing cellular disease the growing portion of the edge of the ulcer heaps up and spills over the normal skin to produce an everted ages dear students see the image the image a showing the undermined age uh, image showing the image b is showing the punch out age and the uh, image c showing the sloping age and the uh, image d showing the red or pearly white braided age and the uh, image e showing the rolled out everted age which is typically in the squamous cell carcinoma now the floor of the ulcer is the this is the exposed surface of the ulcer vein floor is covered with red granulation tissues the ulcer seems to be healthy or he and healing pale and smooth granulation tissue indicates a slowly healing ulcer wash leather slope like wet gemosis leather on the floor of an ulcer is pathognomonic and gametous ulcer one must be very careful to note that there is at the floor of an ulcer a tropic ulcer penetrates down even to the bone which form the floor in this case a black mass of the floor suggests the malignant melanoma now the base on which the ulcer rests the students must understand the difference between the floor that is the exposed surface within the ulcer and the base on which the ulcer rests and it is better felt than seen of an ulcer this is the difference between the floor and the base now the classification of the ulcer there is the two types of the classification of ulcers are possible one is the clinically and second is the pathologically Clinically an ulcer may be either spreading healing and callous types first the spreading when the surrounding skin of the ulcer is inflamed and the floor is covered with the slop without any evidence of granulation tissues or healing when there is a granulation tissues in the floor of the ulcer the surrounding skin is not inflamed and the edge shows bluish outline of growing epithelium more over there is a slight serous discharge or third is the callus where there is a pale granulation tissues in the floor there is a considerable induration at the base edge and surrounding tissue uh, skin this ulcer shows no tendency towards healing now the second type of the ulcer is the pathologically the ulcers are classified into three main heading that is the non specific ulcer specific ulcer and malignant ulcer first non specific ulcer there are various causes of such ulcer according to the cause these ulcers are classified as below first is the traumatic ulcer can be either mechanical that is the dental ulcer of the tongue from the jagged tooth from pressure of the splint etc second is the physical from electrical or excess burn and third is the chemical for application of caustics and second 
non specific ulcer is the arterial ulcer and occurs in atherosclerosis burgers disease and renal disease primary and secondary now the third type of the pathological non specific ulcer are the venous ulcer that is the venous ulcer is post phlebitic limb fourth is the neurogenic ulcer fifth is the infective ulcer pyogenic ulcer and brain sedal ulcer are included in this group sixth is the topical ulcer these ulcers occurs in the legs and feet of the people in the tropical countries infection by the vincent organism that is bacteroid spiriformis in the small abrasion may cause such ulcer seventh is the cryopathic ulcer ulcers due to the clebisian chilblains and cold injury are included in this group the eighth is the martorell ulcer that is the hypersensitive ulcer basin ulcer erythrocyanoid ulcer tenth is the diabetic ulcer we will see details in the diabetic food compartment and 11th is the miscellaneous ulcer that is the ulcer may associate with the polycythemia leukemia systemic sclerosis ulcerative colitis poliomyelitis arteriovenous fistulas acloric uh, jaundice various collagen disorders chronic lymphedema cortisone ulcers are also included in this group and the second type of the pathological classification is the specific ulcers are seen in the tuberculosis syphilis soft sore and actinomycosis melanies ulcers is included in this group and the third group of the pathological classification is the malignant ulcers that is the epithelioma rodent ulcer and malignant melanoma now the diabetic ulcer etiology slight injury to the glucose laden tissue may cause chronic infection and ulcer formation ulceration in diabetes may be precipitated by ischemia due to the diabetic atherosclerosis more prone to infection for of glucose laden tissues may cause ulceration diabetic polyneuropathy and peripheral neuritis may also cause ulcer formation now the site of the diabetic foot are toes and feet particularly the sole is the common site leg is also affected any other part of the body may be affected now the image on your screen is typical the diabetic ulcer is there second image of the diabetic ulcer third image of the diabetic ulcer fourth image of the diabetic ulcer now the nature of the diabetic ulcer is the diabetic ulcer is a deep and spreading investigations blood sugar estimation both fasting and postprandial urine ketone body is culture and sensitivity to the of the discharge arterial blood flow of the lower limb is measured by the doppler of the sound now the treatment of the diabetic foot is the diabetic diabetes should be controlled antibiotics are prescribed to control infection excision of the ulcer debridement and skin grafting once healthy granulation tissue is formed and if not control this then the amputation is the treatment of choice in the diabetic foot if there is a gangrene now the next point of this lecture is the sinus and the fistula first we see the sinus a sinus is a blind track leading from the surface down to the tissues there may be a cavity in the tissues which is connected to the surface through a sinus the sinus is lined by the granulation tissues which may be epithelialized and where the fistula is the fistula is a communicating track between the two epithelial surfaces commonly between the hollow viscous and the skin that is the external fistula and or between two hollow viscera that is the internal fistula the track is lined with the granulation tissues which is subsequently epithelialized a fistula may be an abnormal communication between the vessels and uh, that is the arteriovenous fistula dear students here is a clear cut picture showing diagram 1 showing a sinus and the b is the fistula both usually arises from a preceding abscesses diagram a that is the sinus this is a blind track where in this the case a pyloidal abscess and second is this is the track of connecting two epitheliums surfaces this case is the colonocutaneous fistula from colon to the skin here is a another image showing the sinus and the fistula difference the diagnostic representation of the sinus and fistula to show the difference now sinuses and fistula may be congenital or acquired congenital sinuses and fistula are bronchial fistula tracheus visual fistula arteriovenous fistula and preauricular sinuses etc where the acquired sinuses and fistula are usually follow the inadequate drainage of abscesses the perianal abscess may burst on to the surface or lead to the formation of fistula in ano second is the acquired arteriovenous fistula is caused by the tra trauma or operation for for renal dialysis third is the thyroglossal fistula fourth is the pyloidal sinus or other examples of acquired varieties now the causes of the persistence of the sinus are presence of a foreign body or necrotic tissue that is the sequestrum or a suture material in the dep second is the absence of rest non dependent drainage or inadequate drainage of an abscess when a specific chronic infection that is the tuberculosis ectomycosis etc is there when the tract becomes epithelialized sometimes there may be a dense fibrosis around the wall of the tract and the cavity preventing their collapse as occurs in chronic empyema seventh is the presence of the malignant disease now the causes of the persistence of the fistula are 
once a true fistula has been formed in seldom shows any intention towards the healing moreover irritant discharges such as the urine feces bile etc are passed through the fistula and prevent its healing obstruction of the lumen of the viscous or tube dis- tube distal of the fistula is often a main cause of the persistence of fistula one thing should always be remembered that if the natural passage is made patent all abnormal offshoots heal spontaneously now the local examinations examination with a probe this is a important but should be performed with due precaution this examination will inform the clinician about the direction and the depth of the sinus second presence of any foreign body such as the sequestrum which will be movable at the depth of the wound third is the whether the fistula is communicated with the hollow viscous or not and fourth is the whether the fresh discharge comes out on the withdrawal of the probe or not now the investigations is to be made in the sinus and fistula are examination of the discharge first is the utmost important to come to the diagnosis it should be examined microscopically physically chemically microscopically that is for the sulfur granules and in case of active mycosis and bacteriologically also second is the x-ray examination straight x-ray may show the sequestrum or osteomyelitic changes of the bone concerned or presence of opaque foreign body second is the injection of the radio opaque fluid that is the lipodol or a hypac into the sinus or fistula will indicate the depth as also cause of the sinus by delineating the its course now the types of the pathological sinuses are congenital and acquired are umbilical congenital are umbilical uracal sacral coccygeal and preauricular where the acquired sinuses are pilonidal post surgical actinomycosis osteomyelitis tuberculosis and hydroadenitis suppurativa all these are the acquired sinuses now the congenital sinuses first is the umbilical sinus this is usually result from the con- continued presence of the umbilical end of the vit- vitelline duct as we see in the intestinal chur vitel intestinal duct is there and second is the uracal sinus in fitter the uracal connects the developing bladder to the umbilicus it normally obliterates by the time of birth a persistent uracal sinus results when the umbilical end of the uracus is not obliterated and third is the preauricular sinus preauricular sinus may be unilateral or bilateral these are usually asymptomatic but may become infected if infected antibiotics and drainage are required followed by excision when infection passes off complete excision is sometimes difficult because such sinuses may have ramification which may be the proximity in the branches of the facial nerves this type of sinus if uncomplicated may be left alone excision is only recommended if recurrent infection complicates such sinuses dear students here is the image on your screen is the umbilical sinus clearly seen and this is the images of the brachial sinuses is clearly seen there is a uracal sinus this is the preauricular sinus picture of the preauricular sinus second picture of the uracal uh, preauricular sinus now the acquired sinuses are pilonidal sinus this is usually found in the natural clap it is thought to arise from the loose hair shafts that are shed from the body and migrate to the natural clap during the walking and the pilonidal sinus we uh, described detail in our previous lectures of the po- uh, pilonidal sinuses now the post surgical sinuses are it is a commonly encountered sinus which results from non absorbable sutures material acting as a focus of infection within the wounds it is more common after closure of contaminated wounds treatment is removal of the suture and third is the hydroadenitis suppurativa this is due to the abnormality of the apocrine sweats glands of the body which are found in axilla groin perineum and around the nipples it is characterized by the development of rec- recurrent abscesses the abscess may resolve and may discharge spontaneously forming chronic discharging sinuses other sinuses have been discussed in the appropriate lectures in the management of the sinuses accurate detection of any association deep abscesses cavity or complex deep extensors extensions of the sinus tract is highly important for successful treatment that is for the osteomyelitic sinus for osteomyelitic si- abscesses cavity must be treated to get rid of such sinuses Dear students here is the end of our surgery lecture number 84 that is the ulcer sinus and fistula thank you